One of the first things to think about when we hit our mastering session is compression and dynamic range. So really, we want to try and reduce the difference between the loudest part of the track and the quietest part of the track. And of course, we can do this by manually editing the game. We looked at this right back in the first chapter, and you can actually get in there and use some automation to make things a little bit more uniform by reducing the volume in the louder parts and increasing it in the quieter parts. But if you've done the right job in the mix and you've you know been pretty careful and you've adjusted the level correctly and your relative mix is solid, you should have a fairly good um, dynamic range and dynamic signature now that hasn't got any real problems. If we look at the master that we're working with here, it's pretty good. Obviously our breakdown's quieter, and we can see we've got a quieter section at the beginning here in the intro drums. I'll just play this back. Obviously this is a little quieter than the, the bit where the bass comes in because the bass is low frequency energy. And the breakdown is obviously a little quieter as well because we haven't really got any instruments present. But we do really want to try and iron out the slight differences without smashing the hell out of the dynamic range. And we do that by applying bus compression. I'm going to talk about two things in this tutorial, bus compression and what I like to call cascaded compression. And ca cascaded compression is essentially using more than one compressor in your mastering chain. And we'll look at why that's useful and important in a second. But first of all, let's think about basic bus compression. Now in Reason, right on the mixer, we've got this SSL modeled bus compressor right here, master channel compressor. And just by activating this, we can start to uh, reduce the dynamic range and apply a bit of gain reduction. Now because we're mastering, we really want to keep things nice and transparent. So we want to keep the attack and release fairly slow. I would stay away from the auto release and just keep it on the slowest setting. And a nice uh, minimal ratio, so two to one will be fine. And I like to apply around about, say three dB of gain reduction, no more than four certainly at the loudest parts. And then what you should find is, that when you go back and you play it at the quieter sections, you're getting very, very small amounts of gain reduction. So this is allowing two or three dB of volume to come through, of level to come through in these quieter sections. When things kick back in, you really shouldn't hear it. Now, this is, like I say, modeled on SSL um, bus compressors, and they're renowned for being transparent. They're renowned for doing a great job at exactly this, and that's why it is strapped across the whole master channel, because it's very capable of supplying gain reduction and re reduction of dynamic range without pumping artifacts and without, you know, uh, really being able to hear it doing its job. With that applied, you would think, well, that's enough. We, we don't really need to apply any more compression. In this case, that might be true. But in other situations, you might find that applying two or three decibels of gain reduction with the bus compressor might not be enough. And you might find that, um, you know, you need to apply more compression. Now, of course, you could raise the ratio, uh, decrease the threshold of the bus compressor, um, and say, maybe get six decibels of gain reduction, so we could go to, but you can start to hear it, and it's not conducive, it's not right for mastering. So ideally, you wanna keep the compressor at two or three dB, so how do you apply more compression? Well, you'd add another compressor later in the mastering chain. And in this case, there's nothing activated right now, but we could activate our compressor and add another two or three uh, decibels of gain reduction, well, or another two decibels of gain reduction with similar settings. Now you should find that this sort of uh, treatment using two compressors gives you a more transparent result. Let's keep it playing back. And you can see that there's not really a massive amount of change to the overall sound. I'm not sure that this actually needs this extra compression, but just to show you, we can apply really two or three decibels without affecting the dynamics of the track too much. And obviously using a fully uh, featured compressor like this 
gives us a lot of control. We can control the input stage and the output stage very easily. We can have nice long attack and release stages. And this isn't the only compressor we can use. Of course, well, this is the M class, but we can uh, use one of the uh, rack extensions. And a nice one is the Decam bus compressor. And this is specifically for mastering and specifically for this sort of job. And you'll notice it's got very similar controls uh, to the compressors we're used to, but it's got um, you know a very simple ratio control, which is more similar to the SSL bus compressor. So what this gives us is a compressor that's similar to the SSL bus compressor, but in the rack, um, which is very useful because we can apply this sort of cascaded compression. Let me just make sure that this is um, in. There we go. Now I'm just going to apply very small amounts. And the nice long release again. Uh, one mastering engineer once said, and I don't remember exactly who, he said, give me a compressor with a release, uh, with an attack time of forever and a release time of forever and I'll be happy. So long attack and release times are perfect for mastering. You get that transparent, uh, transparent result. So there we go, two cascaded bus compressors. And of course, if you find you're getting artifacts, there's a mix control on this as well. So we can mix some of the dry signal back in, essentially giving us a slight parallel uh, compression effect. And that's without anything else applied right up until now. Let's just make sure the maximizer's disengaged here. It wasn't actually creating any gain reduction. So with two compressors at this sort of setting, um, we've still got a nice transparent effect and that's cascaded compression. So bus compression and cascaded compression, um, very useful in our mastering chain. Next up, I'm gonna show you a trick for increasing density and reducing dynamic range um, in a similar way, but using a different technique and using parallel channels.